So one of the really cool things about, yet another cool thing about MicroPython is the fact that you can do timer interrupts. And I think I did something on it a couple days ago. And it really the interesting thing is um, that you can do just kind of IRQ, small IRQ handlers, and you can do parts of that in Python if you need to. And if and the, the key limitation is uh, you can't allocate any memory and you can't, uh, you, you basically can't do anything that involves memory um, because you can, those interrupts kind of run uh, in, in a way that is outside of the standard allocation and processing loops. And so one of the things that happens is if you have something kind of complicated, um, you may end up wanting to allocate memory or do some higher level Python or even floating point math. And in that case, what you actually need to do is get the interrupt, uh, receive the callback, and then post the callback to the job scheduler, basically, and then return. Get in and out of the interrupt as quickly as possible. So uh, here I've got the terminal window and... I'm just going to kind of move this servo by hand. You should be able to see that thing moving if I made the window big enough. And uh, we can make the lights uh, go on and off and, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. And so you can see the request coming in on this uh, window. If you're looking at it and not driving around while doing this, and basically I just have a lot of debug output in this so that you can see it. And the thing I wanted to point out is I actually, you know what? Let's pull this over here so you can see it, right? So, actually, can I make this narrower while this is happening? I bet I can. There we go. All right, so I have this. If I want, I can actually... Oh, that's not going to work because that's where I'm going to put the servo. We'll put it here, right? Um, like that. So, if I run the... You know, do any of these things, they run in the back. These just do a web submit and they make it happen. I can also do a timed operation. So... This servo will just sweep back and forth uh, while I'm not doing anything, right? You can see that it's like a couple, every couple seconds. I can also uh, submit pages, and if you look, you can see the light coming on and off, right? But the basic idea is that the time operation runs in the background, and basically what we're doing is driving the servo from 0 to 180, and that involves some math to figure out the pulse width modulation and all that kind of stuff. So let's take a uh, look, see what that looks like. Um, and how it got a little complicated with the code. So the important part with the callback, right, is I talked about this the other day. If you have any state, the easiest way to do this is create an object that has local state and pass in a method from that object. And so the function that we're going to get callback on is called IRQ callback, right? And so that because uh, it's inside of a class, servo sweep, um, I, I, it'll get called with, uh, with self as a parameter and the timer as a parameter, right? Now, the problem is I don't have any idea what the servo code's doing, and I want to be able to do this sweeping back and forth the whole time. And so what that means is I really want to post this to a scheduler, right? So again, dependency injection. I, what I wanted was a class with no imports. So I didn't want to import machine because I actually want to use this servo class when I'm testing on my laptop and there's no machine class there. So any dependencies on Python libraries that are micro Python only, that's a bad for me for writing test code. So in this case, I'll have the job scheduler get passed in. You know what? That's kind of annoying. Let me stop that. So I'm going to pass the job scheduler in and it could be a mock job scheduler. It could be the real job scheduler. So basically, we just new up a servo sweeper and we tell it what job scheduler it's going to do. And then the callback that we do, right, is going to be um, what it's going to do is it's going to say, hey, if there's a job scheduler available, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to post it to the scheduler. Right. If there's no scheduler available, I'm going to run it. So this is actually why it works on a local laptop. I don't pass in a machine in a scheduler. And so it just runs it local. But the important part is actually this reference. What happens is we cannot allocate a reference while generating the callback. Actually, you can and it works pretty well. But if you suddenly end up running a lot of interrupts and other stuff, and you start doing that allocation, man, bad things can happen. And rather than having the bad things that happen, you're going to be like, man, I did it and it worked fine. And then one day you'll have a weird system crash. I did. Um, and so what's going to happen here is this sweep method is the one that really does the work. This is the one that does the callback. Um, if I just called the sweep method by itself, 
uh, given what could happen in that, I could actually end up in a crash, right? Because I could be allocating this servo sweeper while an interrupt's running. I could be doing something else. So in this case, what I've done is all the, I actually have two of these classes, one for blinking a light and one for running the servo. Both of them have an IRQ callback on them, and it could be called anything. And all it does is schedule a call to the real method. So the real method, you, you know what? Let me bring up main. Uh, what was that? Right. So what I do is um, we create a servo sweep object pointing at the servo pin and we pass in a job scheduler right into the MicroPython scheduler. And then um, we just because that servo sweep is an object, really, I'm going to take the local one that knows about the local state. Right. So all this state is available to this method because we created an instance of this servo sweep. Um, and so we can manipulate any of the state in here. And I actually needed a variable in here I needed to do because I want to know um, where, oh, that should be the word start. There's not an endless supply of commits, right? That basically I want to know what where this uh, servo started. Um, and that way I can, every time it flips back and forth to another position, I can say, hey, what's your current position? This is the target position. And then I know whether I got to move or not. And so basically that's what this does, right? So. We create a reference to the sweep function inside of the initializer for this uh, for servo sweep. And that way we can actually reference that function inside this object. We can reference it, we can pass it to the scheduler, right? And that way, nothing, no allocations will occur to have, get on the scheduler and we um, and we still have access to all this state. And so basically what happens on every callback, the IRQ callback gets called, it puts it on the scheduler, the interrupt routine returns, and then the sweep gets called and it does whatever it needs to do. And this is the magic that does that. And this is the setup code I did to the, the servo sweep, passing in the servo object it wants to manipulate. And if we're gonna do a job, I can do this in a job scheduler. And then in the test program, we just pass unknown here and we're good to go. I hope that's useful. Uh, there's some links out there for this, and I just I think this is pretty cool in a way because it lets me write nothing but Python code, and I will start this again because it just makes cool noise and it takes a couple seconds because the timer's got to run two seconds, and you can see that in the main here we act oh no go to the main we actually set this up on a two second period, and probably I could do uh, something a lot fancier in here with more state to try and make that servo move slower, we could pick a speed and we would just do a bunch of little steps and pausing, but I haven't set it up for that. So I hope this is useful. And yet another example of how you can do an interrupt that allocates memory um, using uh, the scheduler. And it'll be a little slower than the other way, but then you don't have to be as detailed about it. If you need something super, super tight timing, you need to do it all with pre-allocated memory buffers. That's it. Have a great day.